I mentioned earlier today that 40 Stories Initiative tells faith stories of 40 indigenous people around Australia. It's an innovative program that shows how God's love impacts people in many different ways, in different parts of Australia, and in ways that are personal and relevant to anyone who's open to the things of God. To tell us more about 40 Stories, Peter Walker will join us shortly. But before he does, here's a short clip of one of the 40 Stories. I was an alcoholic. I, I knocked around in the parks, you know. It was good. What happened to me on the 6th of March, 1999, I was 47 years of age then. That's when the Lord touched my heart. Welcome, Peter, to the show. Look, that 40 stories looks a very timely and relevant uh, initiative. How did it all start? It's The 40 stories came out of uh, the National Day of Prayer. And uh, I understand the National Day of Prayer started somewhere back in 2000. Um, sorry, it was 98. And, uh, and then in... 2006, it was a lady came on the show that was uh, that helped that, and uh, a lady by the name of Sue Tinsworth. Yeah. And uh, then she, uh, a couple of young people by the name of Rod Steiger and his wife Karen. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, they came and helped there. Then Warwick Marsh, mm -hmm. I, I think that we've had him on the show. Him? Yeah, we yes. have. And Warwick. He's, uh, he was about the 40 days of prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. And he asked them uh, to see if we can, you know, to, to bring it all together. Mm. So, so w what's the purpose of it being run? What, what's involved in it? Well, it was, um, the, the initiative really for the 40 stories was by uh, Karen and Rod Steiger from Victoria. And... Uh, it was the pur purpose was really to the raise the, the Christian voice within the Aboriginal community, to make it, and, uh, and it has been a tremendous success. And to tell stories of, of the difference that Christ has made. Yes, in the lives of those individuals. Now, look, a, a question that, 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 that I want to ask you, really, um, and, and I'll, I'm always excited to ask the mm. question, really, is looking at the, 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 the life of Australia, how would you describe to me, Peter, the, the spiritual temperature of the Aboriginal Indigenous communities across Australia? Yes, I believe it's um, that we are experiencing... Uh, um, this for the first time that I've uh, becoming, you know, more apparent of the, of the awareness of the Christian voice, and especially within the Aboriginal communities. So there's uh, a real sense of, of, of something coming alive at the moment. Uh, yes. Yes, very alive. Yeah. And, uh, and to, you know, just to add on to that, I, I know that there are churches um, now with the young ministers that are uh, throughout our nation, and... Um, starting within the territory and uh, every state, really. That's coming out of this experience, as it were. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, look, you've been in ministry for 35 years. You've been married 47, I think, or something. That's right. And you've been sharing with your wife in that ministry. And in, in Redfern and in Sydney for, for 10 years. Um, how did you start in ministry? I... I started because I, I seen the need in, in Redfern, really. Redfern, as you know, is a community where uh, in, the, in the middle 60s and uh, where people came in, Aboriginal people came into Redfern and, uh, or into the inner city because they they're looking for work. And unfortunately, it, uh, it mm. didn't turn out for a lot of them as, as um, they hoped to. And so... And uh, I seen that need there because there was a great need with the young people that were being incarcerated mm. into, and I got involved um, in, in programs and so forth there and eventually um, I, I took over a church there and, um, and, and f it was a tremendous success, I, I believe, and for mm. us. 
Yeah, and many lives were turned around that would have been uh, yes. bent on just aggression, finding a better way for themselves. Yes, um, it was certainly a, a challenge, mm. but, um, but I, I, we've seen lives change. And the Australian yeah. Indigenous Church's ministries, what is it? What, is it a group of people? Is it, is it uh, an opportunity to train and empower? The Australian Indigenous Christian Ministries, uh, the, the main, uh, the reason that was formed in Wikama was to train and, um, and equip mm. ministers in, uh, to minister the word, but also to train and, and church planning. And uh, and uh, and to send out, we we try we part of that really was to also to equip them mm. and get them with a uh, for their own um, you know the uh, for their own vocation. We mm. just didn't want mm. to also just to um, to end with um, mm. just within the church, but we wanted to see equip them for the for life in general. On this program, we do from time to time. We we have singers from that, that that hugely important first peoples of Australia, but we also talk to people who are uh, I involved in in ministry or, or have been set alight by Christ in some real way. Yes. For you, if somebody was uh, an indigenous young person who'd never ever really got involved in the Christian faith, what would you, in a sentence or two, want to say to them about Jesus Christ? For me, yeah. personally, Jesus has been the centre of my life. I say that uh, uh, respectfully, but without him, I, I also um, could have ended up being another statistic like many of my people. Look, thank you ever so much for sharing with us and the legacy that y not only you but many of your community are leaving behind with these 40 stories is certainly something to behold. It's going to be a very powerful initiative. Thank you for coming on Wesley Impact and for our conversation today.